Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to sketch uh, these four angles and then determine which quadrant they're in. So the main important thing, um, before we even get started, is to make sure that we understand what the quadrants are. So again, when you remember, um, you know, when you were first learning the graph, one of the things we talked about was identifying the quadrants. So in the upper right-hand corner, which is positive, positive, would be quadrant one. In the upper left-hand corner is going to be quadrant two, which would be um, x values negative, y values positive. In the lower left-hand corner would be quadrant three. And the lower right-hand corner is going to be quadrant four. So it's very important that you have those written down, especially when you're trying to remember and identify the quadrants. However, I am going to erase this. So um, just because I have them by memory now, um, but you'll want to make sure that you have them written down if you do not have them already memorized. All right. So when sketching angles, the main important thing that you, you know, that I always like to start with is a circle. Because we know we're going to be sketching an angle, and we know we're going to be using a circle. Now, I am going to reserve, I am going to reserve the circle here, I am going to cut the circle only in half. And I'll explain why in just a second. Now, remember, when we're talking about central angles here, um, the main important thing is we know that our cent we, central angle has an initial side on the positive portion of our x-axis. So we know that's where our graph, is, that's where our angle is going to start. We also know that our circle is split into um, two halves, where going around the circle halfway is going to be a distance of pi. Going all the way around is going to be 2 pi. And so the, main, the reason why I do this and the reason why I chose you know, particularly these angles here, is that you guys can see that, actually, you know what? Let's change that to a 5. Dang. Ha, ha. All right, well, let's keep it the same. No, let's keep that a 5. And then let's keep that. Let's do a three. There we go. All right, sorry, I'm going to change, change some of the problems on you. All right, and the, but the reason why I changed that, the reason why I looked at that, because I, I was doing something before, um, whatever my denominator is, that is how I'm going to break apart each portion of my circle. Because you can think of this as pi. So when I have the 4, that's telling me how many sections I'm um, breaking up my pi into. If you guys remember when you first learned fractions like you know, 1 half, you took like a candy bar, right? And you broke it in half. When we said like 1 third, we took a candy bar, broke it up into 1 third. So when we're looking at pi 4s, pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 5, we want to break up each section of pi into those, into those portions. So here, pi fourths, I'm going to break it up into fourths. When I have pi to the six, I'm going to break it up into six. When I have pi thirds, I'm going to break it up into thirds. And when I have it to the fifth, I'm going to break it up into fifths. Okay. Then what we can do is we can reflect that over. Now on this one, I don't have to do that because all it's saying is 3 pi over 4. So I'm going to start here. I'm only going to travel 3 of them. So 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. So you can see that my terminal side lies in the second quadrant. Over here, I have 11 pi over 6. Well, that, I only have 6 pi over 6. So 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi. Right? 6 pi over 6 is the same thing as pi. So that's going to take me halfway around the circle. So I need to continue this. Okay, So I have 6 pi over 6, 7 pi, 8 pi, 9 pi, 10 pi, 11 pi. So go all the way around here. And you can see that now this takes me to the fourth quadrant. Over here, I have negative 5 pi over 6. Now remember, negative means we're going to just be going in our negative direction. So instead of starting, I'm still going to start at my initial side, but instead of going counterclockwise, I'm now going to go clockwise. So i got to make sure that I also do down here. And I guess I probably should always at least put the um, quadrants in here. Sometimes when you're doing thirds, it's kind of difficult because you're breaking it up into thirds, which is the blue. But then also you want to remember like which quadrant it is. So that's why I kind of drew the x and the y axis on top. A lot of times it gets confusing, though, because there's kind of so many lines going on. Um, but anyways, let's count the blues here. So I have negative 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. So you can see that my angle ends in the first quadrant. 
And then the last one here is I have to the fifths. All right, one, two, three, nope. Oh, that's five, oops. No wonder I didn't count five. There we go. All right, so there's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, good. Okay, so remember that all the way around, so again, this is going in the positive direction, so I'm starting here, going all the way around, so it'd be one pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, five pi. Right? That means all the way around again would be 6 pi, 7 pi, 8 pi, 9 pi, 10 pi. 10 pi over 5. Now again, remem remember, ladies and gentlemen, we are trying to get to 16 pi, right? So therefore, I need to now go another 5. Um, or if I go again 5 more, I have 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi. So that's going to now be 15 pi. And if I go one more over, then it's going to give me to 16 pi. So 16 pi is going to go all the way around once, which would be 10 pi. Another halfway around would be 15, and then down to 16 pi, which will take us to the third quadrant. So oh, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. There is an example of how to sketch four different angles, and as well as determine which quadrant your angle is going to be in. Thanks.